Good evening. I'm Pratap Singh Gaikwad, and welcome to the Buggy Khana Jodhpur edition. Today, we're at the gorgeous Khas Bagh, a special place for any automotive enthusiast. And while we're here, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into Suryavir Singh Rathor's vintage car collection, while at the same time focusing on three very special cars. Unfortunately, as much as we tried, Suryavir couldn't be here uh, to take us through this, but he has someone extremely knowledgeable, someone that's very close to him, and someone that has, in fact, helped him put this collection together. So let me introduce you to Devendra, who is now going to be here and take us through this collection. Evening, Devendra. Very good evening. How have you been? Very well, and welcome to the Buggy Khana. Thank you. It's a privilege for me to be here and to be at the Buggy Khana. Good. And, uh, we were waiting for this. I mean, you've seen so much of fantastic uh, coverages that you've done. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now, Devendra, I mean, you have picked these three cars from a very special collection. Yes. I leave it to you to take us or to decide which one you're going to take us through first. Okay. Uh, I think we'll, we'll first go with a very special car. Okay. A very unique and was a technological marvel for the day the 1934 Rio Flying Cloud. Right. Okay. When I say it was special for the day, it was not an ordinary American sedan, right. in fact, but one which, was, which has lots of special bits to it. Okay. okay. Incidentally, give you a little about what Rio is all about. Rio is R-E-O, as stands for the gentleman who owned the company. Okay. That was Renault the Olds. Incidentally, the, Olds, the famous Oldsmobile was his company before right. General Motors took it over. Okay. So he started on his own making the cars, you know, and made some, you know, fantastic cars. Flying Cloud has been in production, you know, since earlier days. And then in 1933, he came up with a, uh, you know, a semi-automatic or an, call it an automatic for the day. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, which he, call, he named as a, you know, self-shifter. Was this so, the first automatic that ever came yeah, out? Yeah, absolutely. It was? Yes. There was nothing before that. Right. I mean, call it, some say it's semi-automatic, some say it's automatic, whatever it takes. So the first so, time that came out was in 1934 with th the Rio. 33 with the Rio. Okay. In fact. Wow. And uh, not only this, I mean, the, while the cars were designed and they were very smart cars, right. which were done, the technologically, besides being, uh, you know, the self-shifter, uh, you know, they had the entire engine block in the head was made out of chromium nickel and alloy. Right. The pistons were also a chromium nickel, okay. which was far advanced for the time. Right. You know. And this coming from a private Absolutely. Uh, manufacturer? From a small very manufacturer. small manufacturer. Right. So much and so that, you know, he had to develop this. He had borrowed so much of money from the market that he actually got bankrupt by 1936. So how many, the, the company existed from which period to which period and how many cars did they actually end up manufacturing? A uh, company was already there from 1912s or so, mm. they carried on, but the right. uh, main production ended in 1936. Okay. After that, they were making trucks and other things, right. you know, which they were always been doing, but the passenger car production ended. Right. And how many did they end up uh, manufacturing? Well, as far as the uh, 34 uh, flying clouds are concerned, there were just barely 218 cars which were made. Globally? I yes. Mean, that's absolutely. Primarily for the American market. But absolutely. Globally. Globally. Yes. So, how many of these came into India? Uh, just two. Okay. Okay. So, this car was actually uh, ordered by His Highness Rajkot. Right. And uh, with, with some of very custom features in it. Right. And this is the only sports sedan. They had two models. One was a regular standard sedan. Yeah. And one was a sports sedan. Okay. So, this is the sports sedan. And the other one was the Chalavar so car. So, only one of the sports sedan. Sport, yes. So this and would the be one of one in India of the sports sedan version. Yes, absolutely. The flying cloud. Right. And, and when uh, uh, the vendor did uh, Suryavir find this car and when did he add this to the collection? And okay. what was the condition the car was in when you bought it? Was it, did it look like this? No, 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 no. Uh, you know, I traced out the car. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, it was with a famous uh, Bombay gentleman. I mean, and one of the brothers lived uh, down south. Right. So he had an earlier, he had, uh, you know, got the car restored at a couple of places. 
and when we had it, it had a cherry red color to it, a very, oh. <laughs> very unusual. And it looked okay, but as soon as uh, you know, I got the car, and then we decided that it's going to be at the museum, right. and work started. And then we know it took us many years to put together. Okay. Yeah. So the car was in red, but what, was it in driving condition? What was the condition like? I mean, did it look anything like this? No, condition no. I'll, I'll, I'll share the images with you. Yes, I mean, I have please. an album of it. Yeah. In fact, no, no. The lines were totally out. I mean, we had to do a ground-up restoration. Right. This is a certainly what they call an off-chassis restoration. Okay. Okay. Everything has been redone. Right. We looked into, you know, every possible detail of the car. Okay. Okay. And it was extremely difficult because there's nothing which is available in the market. Yeah, I can imagine. For a car where they only made 200. Exactly. I exactly. Mean, it's even harder. The Rio Club was of very little help. Right. They themselves were surprised that the car exists, you know. And uh, we couldn't find it. We have to do everything on our own. Right. To figuring it out, you know, where, what, how, you know. And uh, it's been a long journey, in fact. But end of the day, you know, having a car as unique as that, right. as the Rio, it's been very no, special I, to me. I think you guys have done an excellent job. I mean, considering the condition you Thank mentioned you it so to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I, I was always intrigued by the design of the car, the, the layout, you know. It's, right. it's a very smart looking car. Yeah, I mean, uh, though it's a, I mean, generally American cars have a reputation where you know they're very simple, straightforward. All of them look uh, similar. Yeah. This is not the case. Yeah. I mean, there are different design cues which are there, which are very interestingly, you know, incorporated. Yes. You know, uh, the lines flow in. You have the louver shutters, which are yeah. horizontal. I mean, a couple of uh, other manufacturers did follow with it. These are, what, what, are, what is the function behind these? These open up, if you pull them up. Right. Okay, with the knob. Yeah. And oh, they'll yeah. open up. Right. Okay, this is for the, for the engine heat. Okay. You know, the hot air can probably come out, you know. Right. So, so the cool air help, goes in and yeah, the Yeah, help the air. engine bay cool down. Right. Wow. I mean, so, this was in 1934. Yes, 34. In fact. And, you know, just to give you context, I mean, I see this these sort of functions on modern day sports cars. Yes. Where they have these louvers, louvers for the air to exit. Yes, yes. Wow. So this was quite ingenious of them. And while, I mean, the best part is that, you know, there, there are a lot of design cues, how the lines flow in you know, taken in, there's an air vent around here. Right. You know, the way, way the uh, side mounts are in the covers, there, there's a lot of thought process which has gone into them. Right, right. You know, overall, you know, from front till the back. Yeah. And no, she's a very handsome looking car. Yes. And, you know, it all, when you think about American cars as well, while she does have an American stance, she does look like a gangster car as well. <laughs> but, I mean, she is, is a gorgeous looking car. What yes, other, are there any other special features that were, the, you know, oh, made certainly, for this car? certainly. The biggest being the, the, uh, you know, the semi-automatic function right, of right. it, you know, the self-shifter. Okay, if you see the lovely Art Deco instrument cluster. Stunning. Okay. The two big dials, one is the spedo, right. and the other constitutes of all the other got gauges inside. Okay. okay. The small lever there. Right. You know, that's the unique one. Okay. Okay. Because if you see there is no, there's nothing, uh, you Correct. know, there's no, no gear shifter here. Right. That is the one. Okay. So when you, when you start the car. Right. Okay. You press, press the clutch. Right. Shift it, turn it on the right hand side. Right. Okay. And you drive. Okay. And later on, you don't need to press the clutch again. Okay. Just it just it goes on. And that's about it. Wow. Amazing. Imagine we're talking of this. 1934. Yes. And she shifts smoothly. I Absolutely. mean, it just runs. Absolutely. Lovely. You know. Excellent. So, lots of talk like any other American car. Silent. Right. Moves very, very well. Right. And I also noticed that when the, the uh, sort of limousine style uh, enclosure. This was for Maharani Sir uh, Rajkot. Right. Okay. So, this enclosure was done. Right. So, for her to be at the back and uh, the chauffeur in the front. Okay. So much and so that I got the original build sheet, right. which specifies two different uh, kinds of maroon leather. Okay. Okay. Generally, American cars have uh, you know fabric uh, front and the back. Right. All the limos, uh, the worldwide, you know, be it the UK or the American cars, right. they have leather in the front and uh, weller at the back. Yeah. Yeah. But this particular car has leather front and back and specified two different okay. maroon, same color, 
right. but different shades. That's in the build sheet. Okay. So we Very followed that. Right. And uh, if you see, you know, the leather in the front and the leather at the back, the grain is different. Yeah, the shade and is the different. The colour is really different. Gorgeous. And what 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 do you have over here? Is there? Oh, that's the that's the bar. Oh, okay. It's concealed. It's yeah, a concealed bar. Absolutely. So quick uh, brief on uh, the engine. Okay. Uh, though it's a six-cylinder overhead engine. Right. Uh, typically, you know, the Americans had it. Very silent, nine bearings. You know, counter shaft. All's there. But the best part about it is, uh, it's a chrome ni chromium nickel block and the head. Right. Even the pistons were chromium nickel. Well, that's you quite know, unusual. The, yes, it's an it's an alloy, and for a day like that, and it's and it's not a racing car. Right. It wasn't so. Right. But then still, it was done. You know, for better performance, probably quieter. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, lesser heat for them. Right. And again, so, it was possibly this the the person who started this company, a passion for him, absolutely. and he didn't want to cut any corners at that time. Very true. Very very true. Yeah. That's why it wasn't as cheap as many other German General Motors or Chrysler cars. Right. And that's probably what one reason why you know it didn't sell very well. So this was it. and uh, we had difficulty in uh, restoring the engine. It was entirely done up. Yeah. And because we couldn't find anything, we had to go to some reputed company right. here, take the piston, got a metallurgical report from there, right. and then we had to ask them to fabricate for us mm -hmm. with the same configuration. Yeah. So, in fact, I was lucky enough to find a gentleman who used to work in Rio. Right. Uh, he was good 90 years old, a couple of years ago. I don't know. I hope he's still around. Yeah. And uh, he was in Ohio. And uh, I happened to speak to him, learn from him. And he was the one who specified the color. He says, because okay. I was doing a silver, but then right. he said, no, this is the correct color yeah. for it. So it's that level of detailing, which, you know, brings the value and quality to a project like this, right? Certainly. Uh, for me, restoration is all about research and restraining yourself from over-restoration. Right. Pradab, it's very easy to over-restore. Right. You know, look at uh, you know, pictures from the internet and try and order you know, different stuff right. and j then even justify it later on. Right. So that's something which one should not do it. Very true. The gentleman from Ohio who used to work uh, for Rio, I happened right. to find him. Right. And as I said, you know, I hope he's alive. He was around 90 years old then. Right. And uh, he gave us the details and it was thanks to him that I found out the original color on the car. Yeah. It's a color which is called Muscatel Maroon. Right. Like the Muscatel wine. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I got the name and then I started hunting for it. Yeah. And I fortunately in the last 30 years, you know, yeah. I've made a few friends across the world. And some of them have been, you know, uh, man who, who really understood paint very well. So we found out the code. It was not easy, it wasn't there because there's hardly anything which exists of Rio. Correct. correct. And with cross references and others, we checked in and we found this color. Yeah. And uh, here it is, the Muscatel Maroon and the Rio. Correct. As they say, you know, the attention is in the detail. And, you know, when you are chasing perfection, a little bit of luck also plays a big part. You Absolutely. know, being able to be in touch with that person and get some of that valuable uh, information from him. You bet. Yeah. Would you believe it, the gentleman, he did not have a email ID. Right. He did not carry a cell phone. Right. So it was that every every morning and he was only available evening time in Ohio. Right. So I had to actually get up Just every time to him absolutely and call up and it took me months. You know, the phone will keep on ringing, he wouldn't pick up. Right. right. And then finally I got hold of him and he said, you know, see me after a few weeks. <laughs> Let me take, go through the records. And then he told me that there were two cars which were there. This was specially with these orders. These two were shipped to New York and from New York to Bombay. Wow. So, wow. amazing that story. Oh, it, amazing. Was, it was very difficult. And we were extremely lucky, as you said, right. to find somebody like him because yeah. it would have been impossible otherwise to know. Correct. So, having gone through this entire process, you know, getting in touch with these people, talking to them, researching so much, by the end of it, how long did it really take you from start to finish to get to this stage in the project? Well, uh, this was a Herculean task, but uh, it was almost, almost three years. So there is a message in this that, you know, when you're working hard to do a restoration, patience, time, research, all of these things are important. And you have to go through this process. There's no point trying to rush one. 
they, and it will it show can't in can't be right. an honest restoration there are no shortcuts right you have to be patient you have to learn you have to do your research keep on doing it because till the time last thing is done you know you keep yeah. on learning something or else yeah. there is no end to it uh, you know and yeah. that's but that's what it is see pratap you know it you know the entire collection has been put together because of love of cars absolutely it's not about money because you know you can you pick up cars there have been so many imports people have been buying and just dumping their cars to show off right. it is not so here you know it's been yeah. hard thing it's been lots of you know uh, as they say blood sweat and tears which have gone in and we take pride in it you know because there are and obviously i mean nobody is perfect even i am not i am also learning so there are a couple of mistakes you know which we get to learn a very interesting thing which i would like to show you here is if you've noticed the car doesn't have a pin strip yes yeah you know now <clears throat> the interesting reason is that gentleman who was working with olds uh, uh, with rio hmm. so he told me that mr olds was very particular that nobody should come to the factory drunk Right. So he would randomly, <laughs> you know, make them queue up right. in the morning and check testing. Absolutely, he'd open their mouth and you know check that who's drunk and who's not. Right. And it so happened that they're the the, the master uh, guy who doing the uh, who used to do the pin stripping. Right. In fact, he was a drunkard. <laughs> Lovely. So, <laughs> I mean, no matter how good he was, right. Mr. Olds threw him off. And now it's debatable whether you know a lot of cars came the last of it. Yeah. came with the pin strip or not so i i stayed without doing it till the time i was very sure right. as to you know do right. it or not to do it you know? so you equate it from a time period when the drunk pin striper was working versus But, was not working true. so your car could be in in Either one of, of those them, categories yeah so till the time i'm very sure right you know that whether it was on or not because i would not like to do a mistake right. i would rather not do it you know <laughs> and okay. uh, because this this uh, the vermilion color on the wheel itself right. has a story right because american cars and vermilion is something which is very well known with the fords mm. but this car didn't have it so you know that vermilion as we see it yes yeah. you know the orangish vermilion yeah. this is a red tone yeah it's much more and when deeper. i spoke to a couple of people mm. you know who knew up there and they told me it's the same as the decanter the cold, the coca cola decanter right so i even went and found the code for it and trying see it you know if this is what the correct vermilion is right you know and then we found it and uh, we equated with another vermilion from another 1933 car and that was just for the the color on the rims yeah it was, was just for that just for that and how long did that that was uh, also a couple uh, of months a couple day. of months doing going through the formulas trying right. to find out <laughs> talking to a couple of them i mean people who yeah. know in fact i i did i do remember seeing a piece of paper Well I think you had been scribbling <laughs> yes, many yeah. years ago trying to match the paint true true is, you know there were different formulas i mean uh, getting the original ones and right. took the spectrophotometer right. to get the rgb values and then do a 26 27 28% you know up and down wow. to match the exact one well wow. it, it definitely takes some sort of a mad person to get to that <laughs> level of detail thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>